and Extreme Track greets the world's greatest snowcross racers for round four of Absol Championship Snowcross at the Daytona of Snowcross. Can Hunter Patnode continue his domination and hunt down defending champion Elias Ischel? Canadian runner Jordan LaBelle is an early points leader in pro life. Will the Jordan juggernaut extend his winning streak to four in a row? In the pro women's class, Moline the Machine Katu will be tested by tough Taven Woody today. And like father like son, meet a family whose racing tradition spans generations at KC Motorsports. Up next, Amsoil Championship Snowcross, the Pertex Snowcross National presented by Quick Trip. Canterbury Park, Shakopee, Minnesota. We are back. This is for the Pertex Snowcross National presented by Quick Trip. We've been racing here in Shakopee for many years, Robbie. The history, the prestige, and the pressure that comes along with it. So overcoming that pressure was Hunter Patnode, who made a major comeback in round three, but we still have others in the premier class looking to rise here in round four. Francis Pelletier, number one qualifier last night. Big mistake, jumped the start, had to go to the third row. Bad deal for him. Now he needs to recover from that, have a good finish today. And now Josie Christian, our teammate trackside, we're going to check in with her. What's going on down there, Josie? In the last round, we saw them both on the podium running one and two. Logan Christian, Hunter Patnode. That was definitely an exciting race to watch. What was your thought right off that start line when you got that whole shot and Logan was right behind you? Yeah, uh, initially coming like down the start straight, it was Logan had the jump on me. I mean, I want to battle him. I want to go for that number one spot. But you know, you can you sense out there you can race guys differently, and I'm not gonna try to t-bone him and block past him and flip him over. He's kind of become a brother to me. So it um, <coughs> it's a no, it's a it's a cool relationship that we have, and um, we've we've grown to know each other pretty well. And um, yeah, it, it was just really cool. And this is your round two heat two Amsoil Pro Class qualifier. And I'm keeping my eye on this guy, the number 43, Logan Christian, because the Shearing Speed Sports skidoos have been dialed this weekend, and he was on the podium in the main event one round ago. And one guy I'm going to keep my eye on is number three, Adam Peterson. It's time to get going. His teammate is doing it. He needs to step up. Got a good launch. Logan Christian, though. Wow, Logan Christian, whole shot. Adam Peterson, though, picking up where he left off in heat one with the lead. And a great launch for the number three, exactly what he did in the round one qualifier. But uh, Logan Christian followed by Francis Pelletier. So a better start to this one so far. Look at the run front. Pelletier has as he chases down Logan in second. Adam Peterson making a mistake. Logan trying to make a pass. Drives around the outside. Not sure if he can make it happen. Run tries to sneak to the inside. Yes, the crossover move. Will we see the number three return fire? Great little battle up front. The unfortunate thing is, as they're doing that, the guys behind them are catching them. Francis has got a good line. Not sure if he can get it done. Door gets shut just in time. Great, great run on the offense. Dropping back and looking back at officials. Yeah, I think he has something go wrong with that machine of his. Unfortunate for Logan. I'm going to keep an eye on the battle for the fourth place position. That is Evil Hard. Two. Evil Hard trying to make the inside line work, make a pass. He set it up correctly. No, nope, no. Nope. Oh. Off the sled eject. Not sure what he was thinking there. He needed to get on the brakes and he got on the gas. Puts him on the snow. The laps are winding down. This is lap seven of nine. He got out of rhythm that lap. Definitely didn't have the charge that he had the lap before, but look for this uh, two laps to go. If, he needs to, if he's gonna do something, he needs to go now because Adam is riding great. As I say that, big mistake again. Doesn't do that triple. 
Not sure what is going on there, but Francis gets the first one. We got ourselves a race. This is going to be close coming into this corner. 220 on the prowl. One more corner to try to make something happen, but will he have the raw speed as they make their way across the front stretch? Nope. Oh, oh no. Unfortunately for Francis Pelletier, this is just the white flag. We still have another to go. One more. Francis needs to be perfect here. He actually needs to be a little better than perfect because he's running out of time. Adam Peterson looking strong. One section to go. It looks like Adam's going to take it. It is. I think this one came down to what happened just one lap to go with this very section. They give it to the number three, AP. Adam Peterson, Francis Pelletier. Peter Narsa, third. Cole Kachu. Gustav Salston fifth. I have Adam Peterson in the last round. We saw you trying to get this first place for the qualifier. Didn't end up getting it. So what did we do differently this round so you're able to get that whole shot and hold off Francis that entire race? Because it was getting pretty heated there. Yeah, no, the first round I had the win pretty much wrapped up and uh, sled bogged down in the corner down there. Not sure what happened. Went back to the trailer, tried to figure it out. It's such a short turnaround on this new layout and uh, I don't think we figured it out because it's still bogging, so we got some work to do for the final. Okay, well, good luck out there. When Amsoil Championship Snowcross returns, the Pro Life Final is ready to go under starter's orders. Can defending champion Jordan LaBelle continue his winning streak today, or will Riley Bester seek revenge on his home track? Amsoil Championship Snowcross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Amsoil. Runs on Freedom by Polaris. Think outside by Ziegler Cat. We're ready. And by Makita. Experience Makita cordless outdoor power equipment. Rule the outdoors. And here is the Makita Power Tower. It is a place for the eyes in the sky team managers team owners. They are keeping eyes on the track, keeping tabs on the competition and communicating with maybe their rider or fellow teammates. So that all goes down to the Makita Power Tower overlooking the race course. And now it's time for the Pro Light Final. Your number one qualifier is Riley Bester. He is poised to do well. He, of course, has been strong all night, but Kenny Mandrick as well, your number four qualifier. What do you see, Robbie? I see Jordan LaBelle. This kid has been unstoppable this year. Looks great again. And I don't think he's a guy who necessarily needs a high qualifying position in order to perform. So we'll see what happens. We're going to check in with Josie. It's going to be an exciting race with our number one qualifiers, who also got second in the last round. Riley Bester, he is on fire, and he's looking very comfortable on this track. When I was talking to him earlier today, he said he's ready to go. He's going to use that second as motivation so he can get to the top spot of the box tonight and try get Jordan LaBelle out of that position. We are green pro light main event. Riley Bester. Whole shot. Riley Bester, Team of Valley Polaris, just behind him, Jordan the Bell, Oscar Englund, and Shield. The usual front runners, the usual suspects. Riley Bester, however, off the point. Yeah, Riley Bester out front, Jordan the Bell. The battle is on. This is what we wanted. The top two, England in third, Shield third, or fourth. Making things happen early, Shield. Going on for the battle for third, Oscar Eglin versus Anson Shield. Anson potentially an issue with the sled in his qualifying round, but they have this baby super tuned as he's going to battle and duke it out with Jordan LaBelle for P2. That is excellent to see. Anson's feeling good. He's got that Arty Cat back on track. Jordan, never to get too excited usually, just kind of lets the race come to him. He's got confidence that he can catch these guys late in the race, and he should, because he has. He has, and we have shuffled the deck a little bit amongst our top five, so it's Bester, LaBelle, Shield, Evan Doubt. And 61 of Kenny Mandrick, that is your top five. Well, if I'm Riley Bester, I'm looking to redeem myself after yesterday. 
He had the lead. He had a gobble malfunction. And he's blaming it on that. Not that he's blaming it, but it was something that did slow him down. So he has his opportunity to try to beat him heads up. Jordan LaBelle sitting second. And that gobble issue is actually pretty bad. Before we get back to that, we have a battle right now. We have Evan Dowd. He is going side by side and about made a pass on Anthony Shield. That is oh. the position, your race leader. Oh, no. Riley Fester. That was your chance, and you threw it away. This is going to be really, really troublesome for Riley Bester to try to reel back in a guy like Jordan LaBelle and these front runners. And we got a battle again for second. Anza Shield has found some speed again, and he's not letting up. Anza Shield looks so good in this one again. Has, was not a top ball he's fire. got it. Evan Dowd made a little bit of a mistake. It's enough for Anza Shield to gain the ground he needed through that Ziggler path corner. Now he's going to try to close the door. Back into second place, that's a shield. Love to see this. Yes, exciting racing, this pro life final. Not disappointing by any means. Great battle looking here towards the front of the field. Jordan LaBelle is in the lap track oh, and the caution flies yellow. out, however. Yeah. No passing, sled can't leave the ground. That's the one of the Bel Air racing rides, number 46. It's Gustav Solomonson. Jordan LaBelle, we have three minutes and 50 seconds plus a lap remaining. And I like where Anson's sitting right now because Jordan's hitting lappers. He's going to be able to make up some time if he times it right. We're short track racing and things are about to get interesting as we enter the late pace of the second half of this race. So the distance we have right now, Jordan LaBelle has two and a half seconds of distance over Anson Shield. Hang on to it, Jordan. He's riding good. Jordan LaBelle was a winner one round ago. He remains undefeated this season, has 14 career pro life wins to his resume. Anson's made some time up, though. He's cut that lead in half. He's in this. He can see him. And I'll tell you what, once you can see him, that makes a big difference in energy. You don't feel tired. Your legs aren't sore. You don't have that lactic acid coming in. But you still got to get it done. And we're talking about the champ from last year. He hasn't lost the final yet this year, Jordan LaBelle. That lactic acid can be an issue as well in the muscles. So Riley Bester, while he may not be competitive in this race right now, again, he's so married in the pack with that goggle issue last night. He said he was actually racing with a plugged nose because of it. So that affects your breathing. That's going to affect your arm pump and that blood flow. So we are going to hear what's going on trackside with Josie. Josie. One thing we don't think about is mentally and emotionally what they're doing. And I think we saw that with Riley Bester a little bit. He was so excited, ended up fumbling a little bit, got back up, and then he mentally, it mentally got to him a little bit because he was over pushing it. But one rider that we should really keep an eye on is that Anthony Shield. I know that Jacob Yerk has been in his ear a little bit since pro rider Jacob Yerk has been out. So maybe that's mentally helping him a little bit more as we're seeing him advance on Jordan the Bell. He sure has, because he has closed it again. Not sure where, but he is right there. One little mistake from LaBelle. Yeah, potentially the, one of the, the upsides to having a teammate who's injured, especially a guy like Jacob Yurk, who's so strong in the Absol Pro class. So to have a voice like that in your ear, that is invaluable. So I, I fully agree with Josie that that could be coming into play here, but Anthony Shields continues to shave off time from Jordan LaBelle's lead. We have a minute 15 plus in lap remaining in this one. If I'm Anson, I want to start looking for some lines because he's, he's losing ground again. And Jordan obviously found something or found what Anson was doing because he is uh, starting to stretch it a little bit. Yeah, fitness coming into play as we near the end here. Will the time clock expire before next time by? If it does, the white flag will fly. Two to go. And if you're Jordan the Bell, yes, you want to see that time clock expire. Anthony Shields potentially hoping for more, more time, more time to make things happen. A white flag is out, so this is your final lap for the race leader. Jordan the Bell looks to continue his streak of perfection to make it 
four in a row. The Warner Racing Makita backed operation. Skidoo team, so Jordan LaBelle is right along the Ziggler Cat corner. Here we go. On his way to victory, number four of the season. Jordan LaBelle lights it up. Career win number 15 in front of this Shakopee crowd. Makes some noise. Jordan LaBelle gets it done. Congratulations to Team Warner Racing's Jordan LaBelle, fresh from his fourth straight victory. Josie Christian is at the podium for the latest news. And the snow bike class is ready to get after it. Is Troy Horvati ready to race, however, while mending an ankle injury? We are Green Pro Light main event. Riley Bester. Whole shot. He is going side by side and about made a pass on Anthony Shield. That is oh. the position, your race leader. Again for second, Anthony Shield has found some speed again and he's not letting up. Anthony Shield looks so good in this one again, has, was not a top ball fire. He's got it. Evan Dowd made a little bit of a mistake. It's enough for Anthony Shield to gain the ground he needed through that signal path corner. Now he's going to try to close the door. He has closed it again. Not sure where, but he is right there. One little mistake from LaBelle. Go bad really quick. Yes, he has been so, so strong. Here we go. On his way to victory number four of the season, Jordan LaBelle lights it up. Career win number 15 in front of this Shakopee crowd. Makes some noise. Jordan LaBelle gets it done. Jordan, obviously, taking a sweep of the weekend is a huge accomplishment. You have a lot of people looking at you wanting this top spot, and we saw that with Riley Bester getting that whole shot, and then you watched him go down, and you had to kind of move, maneuver around him. So what is that like when you see a rider go down in front of you, knowing that you now have that top spot? I mean, it sucks to see a rider go down in front of you. You never want that, even if he's in front of you. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I was second, so I uh, didn't need to make a pass to go in the first place. Yeah, pretty good race. And with this abbreviated season, round one just occurred the last round, so now we're only on round two for the snowbike division. So in round one, we had seen a Team Canada sweep of the podium, Yannick Boucher, RJ Marnock, and Troy Horvati, but they are not the only heavy hitters in this field. The track is definitely not set up for a snowbike, and they have to find a way to get around there, and it's not going to be easy. Well, let's get after it. Snowbike Moto2, let's head down to the start line. We're about to go green. Whole shot's going to go to Troy Horvati. Such a strong start, but look who it is, Yannick Boucher with a launch across the Amsoil finish line. Takes that race lead, but who has the line going into this corner? Troy Horvati. Shuts the door, gets to the front, and watch. We've got all three. Oh, big mistake by Horvati. Gets crossed up there. And Side by side battle, Yannick Boucher, Troy Harbati, and this is just a rematch of last year because just behind them, Jesse Kirchmeyer. Wow! <laughs> Troy Harbati takes a dive down to the low end side of the track, but is able to gain some ground as he passes on to the next lap. We are on lap two of seven. Well, we got all three right up front, and Boucher goes to the inside. Oh, and look at what happened. Oh, oh. no! Yannick Boucher, the butcher, goes down. I'm keeping an eye on Jesse Kirchmeyer's sled, however. Is he bounce really? No, Troy Horvati now off the track. That Jesse Kirchmeyer's in the lead, but we're gonna keep an eye on the official situation, if indeed he was the one they were pointing the black flag at. Yeah, I'm not sure, but... Oh, look at his sled. On the snow bike, we see potentially some smoke, some steam. I wonder if that sure. to do with it. No, maybe it's, maybe it's nothing, but we're going to keep our eye on it. But Troy Horvati, and he fired back. He was able to maintain composure on the snow bike, that timber sled 157. So he didn't lose too much ground. But this one's not over. Oh, four he of has seven. issues. Yes, he oh, does. Oh, no, that's the black flag. Yep. As I see before, he must have jumped on a yellow or something. But 
unfortunate, but fortunate he still gets to stay in this race. Yeah, it's not the double black flag, so they're going to let him continue, but he did need to drop back to position. So Troy Horvati is going to be back in that race lead. And Robbie, we got cut off there because the situation on track, we were talking about his ankle, and you could see him kind of favoring it out there on the foot pegs, but he was hurt last night at the podium. Well, again, wasn't sure if he was going to line up this weekend, but due to the injury, just focusing on the snow bike, this is his passion. This is where he's built his career. His father, of course, known for his supercross riding as well, so roots run deep in the motorcycle space in that Canadian family. Jesse Kirchmeyer, Kirchmeyer makes a mistake off the snow bike. Round three. Jesse Kirchmeyer spouts some lines on that back section. It's really fast. Let's see if he can catch back up. But we're going checkers. Troy Horvati takes the win. Troy Horvati, Moto2 winner. RJ Marnock in second. And in third, it's Yannick Boucher after the mayhem. When Amsoil Championship Snowcross returns to Minnesota, Malene the Machine Katu and Tough Taven Woody will continue their racing rivalry. It's go time for the Pro Women Final. Amsoil Championship Snowcross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Amsoil. Runs on freedom. By the U.S. Air Force. Full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform. Join us. By Arctic Cat. And by... FXR. Gear up for your outdoor adventures with FXR. Winner one round to go, Yannick Boucher. Whole shot's going to go to Troy Horvati. And Boucher goes to the inside. Oh, and look at what happened. Oh, oh no! Oh. Yannick Boucher, the butcher, goes down. Gets to the front. And watch, we've got all three. Oh, big mistake by her body. I'm keeping an eye on Jesse Kirchmeyer's sled, however, as he battles for the, no, Troy Horvati now off the track. This one's not over, oh, lap four he of has seven. Issues. Yes, he oh, does. Oh no, that's the black flag. Yep. As I see before, he must have jumped on a yellow or something. Catch back up, but we're going checkers. Troy Horvati takes the win. Troy Horvati, Moto2. Troy, obviously some challenges for you this weekend coming in off of the ankle or injury that you earned on Monday. And we talked after practice a little bit and you said it was sore. You were hurting a lot more than you were yesterday, but you knew you just had to get out there and kind of get through the pain in order to get this overall. And that's exactly what you did coming from second place yesterday. So what was it for you? Uh, well, this morning I woke up and I, I thought I was done. I could barely get out of bed, get my socks on. So that was tough. But once I got going, went for McDonald's breakfast and that got me going. Um, so practice went not as good as I'd hoped, but um, just learning the track, trying not to hurt myself more. And the whole shots that, that Kawasaki, bone stock cow, and it's just pulling whole shots like nothing. Um, I've been loving that thing. It's getting me out front early. And I, I can't thank guys from uh, TransCanada Motorsports enough. You guys gave me an awesome bike to ride. And we are looking for Malin Katu to move forward. She had broken her win streak, finished third in round three, so she's looking to reclaim the top spot. But the premier battle we're seeing this season, it also involves Taven Woody. Taven Woody riding really well this year. She came ready to do business, and she's ready to go after that title. David, not going to make it easy for Malene Katu. Let's check in with Josie Christian for more. In the last round, we saw her on top of the podium. Taven Woody, first off, congratulations on that win. That was huge for you, given the circumstances that you're dealing with right now, just kind of getting back to 100% health-wise. But let's talk about that race, because it was so exciting to watch, because not only did you get out front right away, but you were able to hold off the rest of the pack, and that makes the win so much more deserved and exciting. Yeah, for sure. I, I heard Malene the whole entire time behind me. Like, I knew she wasn't far off. And then I seen Inanna. There was some times that she gapped me a little bit. Uh, she was really good on like, just getting right on the throttle as soon as the yellows were over. Definitely exciting to hear that. And now we're going into tonight's racing. Clean slate. You're about to go out there. What's the game plan? I know the girls are going to be on my tail. And I know that they're going to be gunning for a win. And 
Inanna, I, I know that she's going to be gunning for that win, and I know Melina's too, so I just I know I have to keep my head down, I know I have to be smart and just ride my own race and don't worry about anything that's going on. Here we go, round four, turn up, throw out women. Oh, Malika too. And the stud boy hole shot. That's what you want to do in a 17 rider field. Malina the machine gets the hole shot through that Polaris corner. We are clean for good first straightaway for the pro women. Taven Woody going wide in that FXR corner, does the triple. She is not messing around tonight. Yeah, and the pass she made, that was a Nana Hauger. So Taven Woody, there she goes. She is going to hunt down your race leader, Malin Katu. Taven's done it in the past. And again, she has been successful here in Shakopee. She's really taken well to that new Arctic Cat sled that she's debuting this weekend. She takes the outside line, the sweeper. But no, Moline closes the door, closes the line, but Taven Woody fires back. Yeah, that was a perfect setup. Taven makes a little bobble. We have ourselves a battle, but Taven hits her head on the handlebars a little bit. Got into it a little too far. If I'm Taven, I'd want to relax a little bit, just take it all in, see what Melina's doing. Call and response, cause and effect, beautiful defense at play from the number 93. They're defending two-time champion. She's defending for a reason. She's defending her line seemingly with ease. She makes it look easy as she goes through the skidoo whoop section. She's already approaching lap traffic. Yeah, they are in a little bit of a class of their own right now. They are cruising out front, but Taven holding tough. She needs to find something though. She doesn't want to let Malin get out, get out too far, too, out, too far out front, but. As we're approaching lap traffic, and that's what's interesting about this class is you notice this is typically we start 15 riders in the main event here in Shakopee, but the way things worked out with the schedule, general consensus, these riders agree to start all 17. And Taven looking to put a pass, just didn't have enough drive. But she is right there. Malene's got to be perfect. So giving you a running order behind your race leader is Taven Woody. Tasha Lang, Nayli LaBelle. I believe Anana Hauger has dropped back into the fifth place position, followed by Alexa Zanstra. Tasha Lang for West Coast Customs. Skidoo, brand new to the Skidoo this year, has her family helping her out, her dad. Uh, but she also has some really great help on that team as well. Jesse Heisey, one of them. But she says, yeah, my family, we're so used to working on Polaris's. So she's really leaning on her teammates and they've given her a rocket ship with the sled. So it's really good to see Tasha Lang coming out of retirement to contend full time. I think she's going to be quite all right in this one. Malin Katu makes her way through the Amsoil finish line. Malin Katu, her third win of the season. Wire to wire for Malin. We're heading to the podium to hear from our winner. And later, reporter Erica Allred discovers how a father and son share a snowcross tradition. Amsoil Championship Snowcross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Amsoil. Runs on freedom. By Polaris. Think outside. And by Makita. Experience Makita cordless outdoor power equipment. Rule the outdoors. Here we go, round four, turn up, Pro-Am women. Oh, Malika too. And the stud boy hole shot for good first straightaway for the pro women. Taven Woody going wide in that FXR corner, does the triple. She is not messing around tonight. And again, she has been successful here in Shakopee. She's really taken well to that new Arctic Cat sled that she's debuting this weekend. But Taven Woody fires back. Yeah, that was a perfect setup. Taven makes a little bobble. We have ourselves a battle. But and she's got it on cruise control now. Just finish strong. Stay away from some of these lappers. Sometimes their mistake can become yours. All right, and this one, Malin Katu makes her way through the Amsoil finish line. Malin Katu, her third win of the season.
So going into tonight's racing, those qualifying heats are so important so you can learn the track and what you need to do going into tonight. But what was the biggest challenge for you today? I don't know, to be honest. Just trying to read the track, figure it out. I struggled in the back section, but I don't know. It, it went my way and I'm very happy about it. At the heart of snowcross racing, it's family. So we caught up with a racer, Evan Christian, and his father, Carl Christian, who has been an integral part of his program. And we know the Christian family is synonymous with snowcross racing. They sure are. And you, nobody cares more about your racing career than someone like your father. So that is a great, great connection and great team. Erica Allred catches up with Evan and Carl. What is the best part about being a professional snowmobile racer backed by an elite team like KC Motorsports that happens to be your family's team? Um, I, you know, the real reason why I do it is just because the fans, it's so enjoyable, you know, like with all the sponsors, everybody behind me, you know, believing in me and um, getting me out here every weekend. We can't do it without them. And um, it's such a great environment, you know, we just can't put it into words how great it is. And so racing can be a pressure cooker for any rider and team within itself, but it seems like you all have curated a nice, lighthearted and laid back atmosphere ha here at KC Motorsports. Tell me a little bit more about that atmosphere and the working relationship you have with your dad. Me and him, you know, we started this when I was four years old and we, we've worked up to this and working with him now as, a, as an adult and, you know, him being my boss ever since <laughs> I've been able to walk, you know, it's so awesome that he gets to be on the start line with me every weekend. and well, I'm very proud of his work ethic and uh, what my wife puts in, what everybody puts into the whole team. Doing his own thing and he uh, trains hard and he practices a lot. So, In what ways is your dad a role model to you both in racing and in the family business? Well, I gotta say in racing, hearing his old stories from when he used to race back in the day, they were there were some gnarly dudes back then, and, and uh, he definitely inspires me just to, you know, grit through everything. And as just as a person too, he with his how busy he is with Christian Cars Online, he's just so busy, and he still makes time for me, and I can help him out and do what, do the best I can for him. And you know, we both give it 110 percent, and it shows. Still ahead, strap in for the greatest show on snow, the premier class of snowcross, the Amsoil Pro. The world's greatest snowcross racers continue their battle for a 2023 championship. Amsoil Championship Snowcross on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Skidoo. That Skidoo feeling by Pertec, 24/7 hydraulic and industrial hose service, and by Amsoil runs on freedom. Welcome back to the Pertex Snowcross National presented by Quick Trip. We're about ready to go green for the Amsoil Pro Class. This is the premier division of Amsoil Championship Snowcross. So we're going to take a look at this lineup. He is looking for perfection this evening. He went 1-1 in his qualifiers and he was the winner one round to go. Hunter Patno, number one qualifier. One guy I'm going to keep my eye on is Elias Ishul. He needs to start stepping it up. He has not been good all weekend and it's down to the final. Potentially battling some gremlins from an off-season injury. Let's check in with Josie before this Amsoil Pro Final. It's a racy track and it's getting challenging, especially in that back rhythm section. Right behind me, there's a lot more jumps and this is where the riders are finding deep roots and they can't really get comfortable. But it's gonna be interesting to see if Hunter Patnode is gonna go 1-1-1 one, one, one today in sweep this weekend here at Canterbury. And we're off, stud boy, whole shot looks to be. Dan Benham's up and over. Oh, Hunter Patnode. Hey, look it out front. <laughs> it's Peter, Peter Narsa. Narsa. Number 27, Scopeless Race Team claiming their first main event whole shot. But battle for the front, Hunter Patnode and his former rival, Francis Pelletier, who's about to make that pass for second over Peter Narsa. Wow, what a start, Hunter Patnode. Making me eat some crow, but <laughs> Peter Narsa too. Well, uh, hey, we love to be, love to be right, we love to be wrong. Prove us wrong, makes for a great story. The absolute pro class, so just chasing 
perfection once again. We don't want to jinx it for 100 pad node, but this race is still young. Anything can happen. Nine minutes, 10 seconds plus the lap remaining. Battle for the fourth place position. And so you talked about earlier, your picks for the whole shot, Robbie. Augie Palaya is leading over Adam Peterson. That's the battle for fourth. We got a rider down. Looks like Dan Benham, but they moved by him quick. Peter Narsa finally gets the start he wants. He's gonna show us, but he's going in the wrong direction right now. He trapped the position. If you're the competition, the last thing you want to see is Hunter Patnode out front. Oh, yeah. Peter Narsa just not getting, not getting the jump he needed through that line to not Maybe a bit of a mistake there, but Cody Camp is who we're seeing right now alongside Adam Peterson. Polaris and Polaris battle. Creeping in the back there, you see the 200. Elias Ishul, it's time to get going, Elias. We need you to, to pick it up. Elias, there he is, taking that outside line. Adam Peterson just to the inside, trying to move forward through this pack. Hey, we've seen him do it before. We've seen Elias Ishul face some of the toughest odds. Not ideal starts, he doesn't always need them, but boy, does he ever, if he wants to hang on to this point. And these guys are just too good. The evolution of the sport has gone too quick. Elias, maybe back in the day, could just find his way through all of them, but the competition is too thick. And Hunter is out front with clear vision. But you have the uh, number two spot there, Francis. He's not going anywhere. It's going to... It's gonna get real interesting when they get into lappers. And Adam Peterson gets around the number 53, Cody Camp, and that is for the fourth place position, but Cody returns fire. They cross over the absolute finish line, so give you a round out your top five. Hunter Pat, no front, is Peltier, Aki Zelaya in third. Cody Camp, Adam Peterson continue to duke it out. Right. Cody Cam. he's got a young Adam Peterson battle him for that position. Oh, nice little, little mix in some paint there. They can't seem to get away from each other, and us fans love to see it. Now, Elias Ischel trying to make his way around Adam Peterson. Sometimes when you're out front like Hunter, it's awesome. You don't have the roost to deal with, but what you don't have is a sight on what is happening out there for lines. You can get stuck in your line. Happened to me back in 2012, Tucker Hibbert caught me last lap. I was stuck in my same old line, thought I had it. Of course, he was able to catch me and go on for the win. And some people, I think the fans might not always think about it. There might be some downsides to being in the lead and right there to keep his eye on that race leader, Francis Pelletier. Less than two seconds the distance between him and HPA, the Ocho, 1.643 seconds last time by. Yeah, and here we go, Elias getting that triple. Aki couldn't. He's right on the tail of him. Look for a pass down this section right now. I can see it coming. Elias has been fast the last few laps there. He's changing up his line a little bit. Maybe he has something. He is. He's a tenth of a second faster. Elias Ischel, tenth of a second faster than Aki Palaya. Time's running out. We have two minutes plus a lap remaining. So as we get into late stage racing, Handful of laps. Let's go, give or take in this one. So as you enter this late phase, Robbie's still earlier in the season again, off a big break. You challenge yourself on the practice track, but it's not quite, quite like to you line not, up for the main event. Nothing like it at all. This is this is the worst feeling, but you shut it off. You shut that pain off in your head because you're trying to get a podium, and Elias makes the move. Right there. Found that line. Kind of seen it coming a lot before. So here we go. Elias is on a move. He's sitting in third. And out front, staying steady, just maintaining that distance between one another. Francis Pelletier not gaining much, if any at all, on Hunter Patnode. In fact, Hunter Patnode maybe gained some valuable feats ahead of Francis Pelletier. So your race leader continues to be the number eight, followed by 220. 200 now into that podium position, as you mentioned, Robbie, just a moment ago on Nikolai fourth, Narsa fifth. Right. This would be a great night for the Scopeless race team out of Ramsey, Minnesota. They're able to solidify the top five. But Francis Pelletier, we've seen there on our screen. Hunter Patnode. Man, if he is able to hang on for the win, this would be his third in his career. His first weekend sweep, of course. His career, Minnesota continues to be good to him. 
leading good laps. Keep an eye on Francis Pelletier, his game on Hunter Patno. This is going to get interesting. It sure is. Hunter has has to relax. No mistakes. Last lap. Last lap clock has expired. Final lap to go. Like we've seen tonight, Hunter Patno. Patno is going for perfection. This one. Man, is he go, going for the weekend sweep? Hunter Patno just think, needs to be perfect. I sure think he's got it. He's perfect through that section. Francis did not make up the time he needed to try to put a, a block pass on. Here we go. Hunter Patno about to light the candles. He does it. Perfect night. Hunter Patno back to back wins. Career win number three. Tip of the cap to Shearing Speed Sports. Celebrating with his teammate, best friend, Logan Christian, who finished in the top 10. A round three and four sweep by Hunter Patnode. Josie Christian is standing by with the Shearing Speed Sports Racer to find out what worked today. And we're off, stud boy, hole shot looks to be. Dan Benham's up and over. Peterson continue to duke it out. Right. Cody Cam, he's got a young Adam Peterson battle him for that position. Oh, nice little, little mix in some paint there. Here we go. Through the Arctic Cat section, speedy rollers. That's a good battle right there. Cody Cam, Elias Ishwal, they're starting to catch Aki. Yeah, and here we go, Elias getting that triple. Aki couldn't, he's right on the tail of him. Look for a pass down this section right now. Even Elias makes the move. Right there, found that line. Kind of seen it coming a lot before. So here we go, Elias is on a move. He's sitting in third. Hunter has has to relax. No mistakes. Last lap. Last lap clock has expired. Here we go. Hunter Patnode is about to light the candles. He does it. Perfect night. Hunter Patnode back to back wins. Career win number three. Tip of the cap to Shearing Speed Sports. Hunter, welcome back to the top of the podium. It sounds like you got some fans out there for you. That obviously has to feel good, but so does this win. In your win in the last round, you swept this weekend. So what was it about this track that allowed you to succeed so well, especially in your qualifying rounds? You went 1-1-1 one, one, one today. Yeah, honestly, I don't even know if it was a track. I think I just got alluded to the Fox shocks that I have on my sled. It, uh, that sled handled well. It, today, was uh, there was a lot of bodies flying around and a lot of people crashing. So a lot of it just came down to, uh, you know, minimizing the mistakes. Um, you know, even if you got to go a little bit slower one lap and, and kind of regroup a little bit, uh, you know, that's what it took. Well, in Shakopee, Minnesota, Elias Ischel finished off the podium in round three and third in round four, but still good enough to hold on to the points lead with 147. Hunter Patno, this is the biggest move after round four up into the second place position. He dethrones Cody Cam, but Cody Cam still third place in the points with 132, followed by Emil Haar with 124, and Adam Peterson now into the top five with 118. The tables have turned. The Cody Cam, Elias Ischel, show in Fargo was not here. The Shearing Speed Sports team did their homework over the holiday. So on behalf of Robbie Malinowski and myself, Haley Shanley in the booth, and our broadcast partner, Josie Christian Trackside, thank you so much for tuning in. You can follow along on social media with Amsoil Championship Snowcross on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Have a great night.